Hey, she's paying attention. She's always paying attention. It's good, so good to see everybody this morning. Why don't we all stand up? Three more weeks. Are you guys going to come to sunrise service? Yes. Yes. So beautiful out there in the morning when that sun pops up right behind us. It's so, so beautiful. So if you've never been, maybe this year's the year. Come see the sunrise, literally, right? The sunrise. It's so beautiful out there. All right, well, let's join together in our call to worship. Praise the Lord who has done great things for us. Let our tongues shout for joy. God will turn our tears into shouts of joy. seated. Welcome on this wonderful Sunday morning. Um, we're doing communion this morning. Does anybody not get their communion element when they came in? If you didn't, just raise your hand and someone will bring it to you. So just keep your hand up until you get it. 
Our prayer focus this week is on the church, the Big C Church, so just keep the church in your prayers. It's, um, it's troubling times for us as we try and reach out to new people and share the gospel message. If you could sign the attendance pads and pass them down, that is, I'm always thankful for those who do sign it. Thank you for that. Tomorrow we have prayer. We'll be meeting over in that corner at 8.30 for those who wish to join and pray. So just come and we'll be there. Uh, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. There'll be an Easter egg hunt at 10.15. Uh, you'll meet in the COC. And we still need some Easter candy if you can bring that. So this week. Uh, sunrise service is April 17th, which is Easter Sunday morning. It'll be 6.30 at uh, Pelican Park. Uh, so hopefully you can come there. We may have a baptism or two um, to do right after the sunrise service. So y'all can hang around for that as we celebrate that. We'll see. Uh, they're just trying to get their schedules straight. And please order your spring potted flower for Easter Sunday. The order form is in the bulletin or you can call the church office. Next Sunday is the last day to order. And we just want to make sure with any graduating seniors that we, we've got you there. Um, so that we don't leave anybody out. So if you've got a graduating senior this year, because sometimes there's a college graduate and we don't know about that, because kids take all sorts of times to graduate from college anymore. It's no longer four years. It's whatever feels right. So, <laughs> so if you've got a graduating senior, let us know so that we can honor them. And with that, let us stand and kind of greet one another, wave to one another. And then we'll continue praising God.
Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord.
we are so grateful and thankful that after death there is something else. Father God, we are so grateful that there's more to this life than just waking up and breathing. Father God, we thank you for that great commission to go out and love others as you love us, to seek out those who don't know you, to speak your words as best we can that you've given us to give to them. Father God, this is our prayer, that you'll give us the strength, the compassion, the wonderment to seek out those who don't know you, to speak to them of the love that you give to us, not to preach to them, not to hit them with all these Bible verses because they don't know what that means yet, to show them love. Show them compassion. Show them understanding. But then to tell them where that comes from in our hearts. There's so many people that have got these gaps in their hearts, these empty holes, and try to find so many ways to, to fill them. Let us plug Jesus in that hole, Lord. Let us be able to plant a seed of Christ, of you, God, in their hearts so that they can find you and find heaven.
And you may be seated. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and peace, we come here this morning thankful for your love. Thankful that you never forget us. That you're always thinking about us. And that in you we find life. In you, we find hope for the future. In you, we find love. In you, we find grace. In you, we find a way to live, a hope, a power, because you are our life. And Lord, we come this morning just to praise your name, knowing that we, we have our failures, we have our moments where we, we don't get it right. We have our moments where we don't go, where we do the wrong thing. And yet you still love us. You forgive us. You brush us off. You pick us up. You hug us and you say, go again. And we thank you for that kind of love, that kind of guidance that life. Lord, as we come here this morning praising your name, we also lift up those that are hurting. We lift up all of those, Lord, that have been displaced in Ukraine. Those that are grieving the loss of home, the loss of loved one, the loss of livelihood, that find themselves refugees. that find themselves wondering what's next. And so, Lord, you are the one who can touch their hearts. You are the one who can bring resources to them. You are the one who can bring peace in their lives. And so, Lord, we lift all of them up to you for your peace. We can only imagine their pain and their frustration, but we can't totally understand what they're going through, Lord. But we know you do. Because you know what it means to be in exile, to run for your life. You know what it means to be hated. So Lord, be with them and strengthen them. And Lord, we lift up those on our prayer list to you also and ask for restoration. And Lord, we even now lift up to you that one name, that one request that is silent in our heart that we name before you now. And gracious Heavenly Father, we do lift up your church across this country, across this world. And as we look at the pain and the violence and the hurt that is going on in our communities, in our country, in our world. Lord, we recognize that we are failing to share your love. That we need to be more about proclaiming your good news, your hope to the world. Not just this morning at this hour, but every day, every hour to those that we meet, that we reflect your love. And Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to do that, to be your church to be your people. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be your people and share your hope. Share that there is a better way, a better love, a joy that doesn't end, a peace that passes all understanding. Lord, help us to share that. Help us to be your people sharing that love. Beginning with those we meet here in our neighborhoods, as we shop, as we work, as we go to school. Use us, Lord. Use us to share your hope. Lord, during this Lenten season, as we focus on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, we recognize that his death brings new life to us, that the old is gone, the new has come, and that you are making something wonderful, you are creating something new. Help us to claim that newness, Lord, both individually and collectively. Help us to focus on the wonder you have for us so that we might live for you always and everything. Where? 
And Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray the prayer we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, we invite our children to head off to Children's Church. As they head that way. The rest of us will continue to praise God. Your love's making all things new. You're working it all for good. For the things of this world, there's hope renewed in the life that is found. out of that time where we lift up our tithes and offerings. If you haven't placed them in the basket, you can do it at the end of the service. So let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you give us. We thank you for the blessings you give us. 
And Lord, you give us gifts to use when we say yes, gifts to build your church. Lord, I know each person here has been gifted in some way. And I thank you for those gifts, Lord, and I pray that they are unleashed in the coming years, that people discover their gifts, the joy in serving, because it isn't, Lord, just our resources we give to you, we give ourselves. It's the greatest gift we can give to you ourselves. And so, Lord, when we go and we serve you, be with us, strengthen us. And when we don't do it right, Lord, use it anyway. Use it for your glory, because we'll never get it right all the time because we're imperfect. But Lord, help us to go and to serve and to give. And Lord, now as we come to give a portion of that blessing back to you in the form of these, uh, our tithes and offerings, bless them and multiply them and guide us in their use. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, 16th verse. Hear now these words. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The wild animal will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, one of the things I like to do, as you probably notice, is I search for funny stories. I, start, I like to find humor in my life because there is so much bad in the world. If you don't learn to laugh, you'll cry. And sometimes it's just laughing at yourself for the stupidity you do. You all have done something dumb before? <laughs> and sometimes you just got to laugh at it because I think God chuckles at us too. And one of the common places that you search every now and then is church signs and church bulletins. We don't always proofread what we're putting up there, how two different things that we're trying to communicate, we put them so close together that they come out saying something we never intended. Like this one church that had this on their sign that read, we care about you. Sundays, 10 a.m. only. <laughs> and the sad thing about that sign is that's the way a lot of people think. The church cares for them. Oh, if you come in on Sunday morning, they're going to think the world of you, but they don't have time for you the rest of the week. Or maybe that's the way you think about your friends. If there's something they can get of you, they'll use you. But if you're hurting, they don't see you. See, there's a lot of pain in the world. And we and the church, like everything else on the planet, will never be perfect. Even when we try and do our best, we will fail. When we try and help some people, we will end up not helping all the people who will not help somebody completely because we'll fail. We're imperfect. We get tired, we get sick, we get hurt ourselves. And what I've learned in my life is that about everyone is going to deal with something at some time. I have yet to find the person who has nothing wrong with them that's more than a day old because they haven't had time to mess up yet. 
but all of us will experience something. And I admit that some people seem to get a bigger share of bad stuff than others. But all of us deal with trouble. And sometimes we deal with it as a collective body. Just think about the last 100 years for our country, what we've dealt with together. We dealt with a depression that affected everybody. We dealt with a world war where it seemed everyone sacrificed something and everyone knew somebody who lost a loved one. We lived through that great inflation time in the 80s where to buy a house, it was 16% interest sometimes. Now we live through this, have lived through this pandemic and are still living through it that has touched everyone. There are times that we cry out to God, when will this end? And this is what I think Isaiah is speaking to. He's speaking to a people who've had been taken from their homeland. The Babylonians have come in and completely destroyed Jerusalem and taken the people into exile. And so Isaiah is going back to the time that the people were in Egypt and God brought them out. And out of this passage, I think we get one of the most powerful promises of God. It's one that I have relied on my whole life. Listen again to what Isaiah tells the people. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. What that meant for me for all these years is that my past does not define my future whether it was past mistakes or past successes, they don't define my future. God defines my future. And God is going to make a way for me to live this life with blessings. And even if my life ends, God is going to make a way for it to continue. See, what I've come to believe is that God is a God of the future. He wants us to have a glorious and wonderful future. And we should focus on our future every now and then. I love what someone said about that. He said, you know, we should be concerned about the future because we'll have to spend the rest of our lives there. Of course, I love the poetic way that Reuben Al said. He said, hope is hearing the melody of the future. Faith is to dance to it. I think I've shared that before. I just love that. Hope is hearing the melody of the future and faith is to dance to it. And all of us, I think, are going to wish that we could make some of the past stuff go away. But God doesn't make it go away. He creates something new, but he will sometimes use the past for a better future. But he's always working towards a better future. He's always working that no matter what happened here, there's something still to live for, something still to achieve. There's a story from about 100 years ago where a football player got the name the wrong way Wriggles. It reminds us that in an instant we can just totally mess up. We're thinking we're doing the right thing. It was New Year's Day, 1929, and Georgia Tech was playing the University of California in the Rose Bowl. In that game, a young man named Roy Wriggles recovers a fumble for California, gets misoriented, and starts running the wrong way, headed towards scoring for the other team. He ran about 65 yards before one of his teammates tracked him down and tackled him before he got into the end zone to score for the other team. Well, the Bruins had to punt just a few plays later. They didn't get a first down, and Tech blocked the punt, scoring a safety and demoralizing the team. Well, this strange play happened in the first half, and at halftime, the California players filed off the field and into the dressing room. They all sat down on their benches in the the floor and Wriggles sat down in the corner and put his hand, face in his hands. Usually the football coach tries to find some great thing to say at halftime to fire them up for the next half, but that day Coach Price was just quiet. He wasn't sure what to say. Well, the timekeeper in announced that there was just three minutes before playing time, so that he always stood up. Coach Price stood up and told the team, men, the same team that played the first half will start the second. Players got up and started out all but Wriggles. He didn't move. Coach Price went over to where he was and said, Roy, didn't you hear me? 
The same team that played the first half starts the second. And Roy Riggle says this, he looked up, his cheeks wet with tears. He said, coach, I can't do it. I've ruined you, I've ruined the university's reputation, I've ruined myself. I can't face that crowd. Coach Price reached down, put his hand on his shoulder and said, Roy, get up. The game's only half over. Riggles went up and he went onto the field and he played wonderfully that second half. All of us, I think, have run in the wrong direction, intentionally or unintentionally at some point in our lives. We've all gone the wrong way. And when the consequences come and hit us, we just want it to end. But God says, no, there's still life to live. There's still joys to be had. And that is the way it is with Christ. There is always a brighter tomorrow coming when the storms of life roll in. The Bible is filled with stories of new beginnings and things we are waiting for. Paul in his letters to the Romans talks about the, the hope we are waiting for. He says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoptions as sons and daughters, the redemption of our bodies. Paul reminds us that there is something wonderful coming in that next life. And even John speaks to that new thing coming when he writes at the end of Revelation, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he sat on the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. We have this hope. But it isn't just for the next life. It is for today. This is why Jerry reminds us, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. See, God longs to give us a future, a good future. Not one full of pain and heartache, but one full of love and peace. When life brings us trouble and other stuff, we can be confident that God is in our corner. He has plans for a future, for us, a good future. And he's not going to give up on us. The writer of Lamentations put it this way, through the mercies of Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He's reminding us when we've made those poor decisions, and I know I have, when we've messed up, we can be certain that God does not want us to remain in our mistake. He wants us to begin again. He longs for us to come to him in repentance and shower us with his love and forgiveness and set us on a new path. And that's what our scripture says today. Do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it springs forth. You may be experiencing a trial right now. Wondering when it will end, Lord. The promise of God is that it will. One of the blessings I have now of being in the ministry 25 years and even before that working with people, I've walked with people who've had to go through some very traumatic and hard times, times that lasted two, three, four, four years. But now I know them 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road. And these things they walk through are but a distant memory that God is doing a new thing in their lives. Today they are alive. 
And God will do a new thing in your life. And our problem is sometimes we hold on to those past hurts. We won't let them go. We hold on to those past mistakes and we beat ourselves up in the future thinking, oh, if I only hadn't have done that. I do that a lot. I'm getting better. But if we can let go of those past things, God will even do better things in our future. See, we hold on to so much that is keeping us from having a wonderful life. If that's you, God is saying, do not hold on to the past and see what wonderful things I am doing. And it could be even holding on to something good. See, that's the other thing we hold on to is something wonderful happened to us in our past. There was a wonderful time and we live our whole lives trying to recreate that moment and not seeing all the new things that God has given us because we want to create that past thing again. And churches are doing this all over the place. And many institutions See, we're suffering from, we're holding on to the past. Every church I've served, when I got there, they told me all the wonderful things they used to do, and I could tell in their voice that they wanted them to be happen again. And yet every church I've served at, we found new wonderful things to do. Because when we let go of those past things, whether good or bad, we found that God is leading us into new good things. See, we can long for the past so much that we miss what God is doing today for our future. We need to not hold on to the past so tightly that we cannot embrace the future. This is true for us individually and collectively. This is our hope that God will give you a new beginning, that God gives new beginnings. This is throughout Scripture, story after story of new beginnings. And this is one of the messages of the cross. That Christ died and took our stuff with him to the cross so that as we go forward, we don't own any of that stuff. Christ took it all to him. It's all gone from us. There's nothing but good left for us to live. And we can live today and tomorrow because we know that God will provide a place for you. God will provide a path away in the wilderness and desert. God will make a way for you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for so many blessings. We thank you that when we're hurting and life has hit us upside the head and we don't know which way to go, that you are there guiding us, that you are leading us into a new future, that you are doing a new thing. Lord, when it's dark, help us to see that new thing. When the clouds of a storm roll in, Lord, help us to see that new thing. That this will not last, that joy is coming in the morning. Help us not to focus on past pains or even past glories and help us to focus on the future, the good and new things you are doing for us. Because Lord, we thank you that you are God of the future and that our past does not determine our future, but you determine our future. Our faith in you determines our future. Our walking with you determines our future. And when we put our trust in you, that future is bright. We thank you for that bright future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And one of the ways that Christ called for us to remember him, the sacrifice and the love he gave through him was through Holy Communion. So as we prepare for Holy Communion, go ahead and take off that top layer, the cellophane. And I will instruct you when to take the bread. I'll hold mine up and that's a sign that we're about to take it. But remember how Christ on that final night gathered his disciples to teach them one final time to share them that something good was coming, that it's going to look dark for a moment. But after that darkness, there's going to be joy. 
There's going to be a new way of living, a new hope. And so he shared with them all that teaching, shared with them a meal. And then after all of that, he took bread, just ordinary bread, and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks over it and said, take and drink from this. For this is the blood of the new covenant which has been poured out for you and for many. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we come to the table this morning to be fed by Christ, to encounter the risen Lord. So let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you meet us at your table, that you feed us, that you fill us with joy, that you love us. Lord, as we come to this table, we know we are not worthy to gather up the crumbs beneath it. But you don't make us eat the crumbs. You pick us up. You seat us at the table. You forgive us. So, Lord, let each person here know in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And that in that forgiveness, there is a bright future. So make this bread and this juice be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with each other and one with you in ministry to the world until we feast together at that heavenly banquet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Oh, God of grace, we thank you for your love. We thank you for filling us up and feeding us each and every day, giving us strength to take another step forward. We thank you for new things, new beginnings. And we thank you that our past is behind us, that in you we have a bright future. And we thank you for all you forgive us with. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sing in the troubled time. Sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and I fall down again. I can sing because you pick me up. Sing because you're there. I can sing because you hear me, Lord, when I call to you in prayer. As you prepare to leave, let us reach up and grab God's hand and know that he will always walk with you and that he is walking. If you're going through something tough, he is walking through you, with you, for a brighter future. So go hand in hand with God. Go into that bright future and go and share his love with the world. Amen. <laughs>